Hey folks, today we will answer the age-old question, can I become a creative person? The answer is yes. There, I saved you like 10 minutes. But let's talk about why that is, and also what the experience is like when it comes to becoming a creative person. Before we dive in, hi, my name is Julie, and I make art videos like this one, and that one, and these ones. Also, you could hear my lovebird in the background. His name is Paprika, yes, like the pepper, and he's in the other room, but he's super loud. I also have two budgies, but they're usually pretty quiet. Just ignore him, he just wants attention. I wrote a blog post back in 2019, julierocksart.com by the way, and wanted to share it here because the message still rings true in a lot of ways. So here goes. <clears throat> there are some incredibly talented people on this planet. They seem to have an inherent sense of creativity. It lives in them and was reinforced in them during their childhood through countless words of encouragement. Most artists have been practicing their craft since as long as their memories serve. Ask any illustrator you know when they started drawing. They likely won't be able to pinpoint an exact moment in time since it has always been a part of their life. I was never one of these people. In fact, for as long as my memory serves, I never considered myself creative in any form of the word. Science and math were always my forte, but these subjects didn't interest me. In my mind, artistic talent was inherent. Something seemingly written in your genes or brought up in you in early childhood. You either developed creativity within the first five years of your life or you didn't. And if you were part of the latter group, there was no way to develop this mentality. Now I see the complete error in this mindset that I once held on to so strongly. The fact of the matter is, creativity is a skill and a way of thinking. It's most definitely not an inborn quality. Creativity is attainable. But as true with any skill, time and practice are virtue. It's also important to know that this skill was fostered and practiced by young artists in grade school with their Crayola markers. They've been training to become the artists they are today. Do not make the mistake of underestimating or dismissing the time and effort put towards developing an eye for art. It doesn't matter if someone began doodling nonsense when they were four years old. Practice is practice. Oh my god, no! <laughs> Oliver, you're gonna step on my paint and you're gonna make a mess. And who's gonna clean it up, huh? Oliver, he almost stepped on my paint because it was in his spot, right? <laughs> Are you claiming this as your spot, Oliver? Sir, sir! You can't just do that. Move out of my way. This is my house. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse you. Expertise really doesn't come naturally to anyone. And we all generally start off on the same playing field when it comes to our skills. The sooner that we acknowledge this, the sooner we can take full ownership of our artistic development. So even if you're grounded in the logic of a right brain thinker, you can develop a sense of creativity. You can train your brain to think in more artistic terms. As a right brain thinker myself, I'm slowly learning how to see beauty and inspiration in the day to day. Anything that can be translated into a scene in my sketchbook really. I've begun to see the world through a different lens. And this is something that has come naturally the more that I practice art. Creativity is a mindset. The more you practice it, the more it will develop. And that's the post. If you're an overthinker, you could probably relate. My brain just does not stop. I pick things apart constantly, including how my art journey has shifted my way of thinking to such a degree. 
So naturally writing, aka waxing poetics about the highs and lows of art and life, is a way to remove those thoughts from my head and get them down on paper in a way that's less of a jumbled mess as it would be living in my mind. It really is an outlet for me, so if art-related blog posts is something you're interested in, come by and read through some of my articles. YouTube obviously requires a lot more time than writing in my blog, but I do hold my website near and dear because it's all mine. It's my domain, I designed it, I can post whatever I damn well please. Speaking about being able to develop your creative side, yes, 1000%, this rings true, absolutely. Learning how to create any sort of art shifts your perspective on so many things. Knowing how challenging it is to even transition from the beginner to amateur stage of an art-related pursuit, which is personally all I can speak to, gives you an appreciation over the time that people put into their craft, whatever it may be. When I worked at an art community center, fiber arts was not something that I connected with at all. But just seeing how proud the students were of their loom work and having them come down to the front desk to show us what they created because they were just so dang excited about it was infectious. Because I understood that feeling firsthand. Learning how to paint and creating something that you're actually so happy with feels like you hit the jackpot. So when you can share this feeling with others and cheer each other on, it's like you're part of a club, one that's formed via a creative bond. And it's a nice feeling. Learning how to draw and paint made me see the world differently. I started to notice the small details, as you pick up when copying reference photos, but this translated into real life. I started to notice colors that I didn't see before. I began to stop and stare at interesting textures and shapes that I would have just walked by in the past. A groundbreaking moment for me was being the passenger in my mom's car and a big rusty semi-truck drove in front of us. I looked at that old neglected piece of metal and thought, my god, those reds are beautiful. <laughs> Pursuing a creative hobby really sparked something in how I saw the world around me. It took a couple of years, but my mind just shifted slowly and naturally to seeing the beauty in everyday things. I can't give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a creative person. If you want to get to this point, all I can tell you is to create and keep on creating. Look around you, go for walks, and take inspiration from your surroundings. I genuinely believe that fostering our creative side makes us better people. Kinder, more patient and understanding with ourselves and others, open to new people and experiences, and more grateful for the little things. Looking out my window right now, I see moss on our driveway, adding a splash of green to the dark pavement. I see bare winter tree branches that twist and turn in chaotic ways. I see the silhouette of a mountain in the far distance, hello British Columbia, and it just adds character and dimension to the landscape. There's just so much beauty in the world to appreciate. Yeah, that was a little bit cheesy, but it's true. My mind goes to these places, okay? And it's eye-opening and heartwarming and so damn wonderful. So from a previous right-brained analytical type person to now a more creative and colorful one, I'd like to formally invite you to the Creative Bond Club. Chase after that newly discovered creative flair of yours. Do it, even if for the sole reason being, I dare you to. Okay, I'll get off of my soapbox now and let's talk about the art. So when I use reference photos, it's because I like someone's pose or outfit or the colors used. I'll draw it out, I'll map out lights and shadows, then color match the clothing. Afterwards, I'll put the reference away and just work with the sketch and whatever I mapped out beforehand. So the end result is someone who doesn't look entirely like the reference photo. Also, normally, if someone is a bit more pale in a photo, I like to add some color to them. 
I just enjoy painting olive skin and I'm not well versed at painting fair skin or very dark skin. But since part of my 2024 goal is to master skin tones, I just have to get out of my comfort zone and figure it out. It'll take time, but it would be nice to be able to paint a wider variety of skin tones. I painted this using my Artix Jelly Gouache set, which I revived recently, along with some handmade bronze shimmery watercolor for some finishing touches. I wasn't originally planning to outline the entire piece, but once I started, I just couldn't stop. But at the time, I was worried I'd regret it. I tend to fall back on outlining a piece when my values aren't clearly defined. So I'd like to get to a point where I don't have to rely on line work to pull a piece together. But I did enjoy using a purple color to outline. I think it makes the painting look more dynamic than it would if I used black. Her head's a little big. Either that or her hands are too small. Some would say a mix of both, but I'm satisfied with it. The background was feeling a tad plain, so I splattered some more bronze paint on it. And I really love this as a finishing touch. I posted a paint making video on my channel recently, which is where I made this bronze paint among some others. So check it out if you're interested. And on that note, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share your thoughts down below. I'd really love to hear your take on becoming a creative person. Do you believe creativity is something you can develop over time? Or are you just born with it? What even is creativity? Dun dun. Like, subscribe, hit that bell, or do none of these things. And until next time, stay creative. Peace.